Yes, and I think that's a very human uh, reaction. We're, we're very conservative creatures. We don't like change, and we absolutely hate uncertainty. And therefore, the future is always going to be something we worry about. And uh, that doesn't mean that the future will be as dystopian as some of the current headlines seem to suggest. You know, we're talking about climate change, issues, we're talking about AI and everything else, and obviously the situation in the Ukraine. So it's not easy, but I think projecting forward, what's most important is that actually 2050 is only a generation away. So I think the idea of actually imagining a world that our children's children will inhabit is something quite close to us and is something worthwhile exploring. What areas of the world and humanity's place in it are you actually exploring? Well, that's, that's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, the World in 2050 uh, series, as you mentioned, is a series of eight talks. And the whole point behind it is to provide a holistic view of the world in 2050, not just looking at one dimension, but looking at all the different dimensions, whether they be political, economic, social, ecological, or technological. And I think that's what these eight talks are trying to do is to provide an overview at the beginning on the 16th of June and then deep dive into the various dimensions. Are you hoping that the, uh, the grown-ups of tomorrow will come to these? Because one has to say that many of your members, including myself, uh, won't be around in 2050. Well, that's interesting. That's exactly when I, when I sort of uh, positioned this to the uh, committee, uh, you know, some, some of the members are of advanced years, let's put it this way. And they said exactly that. Uh, I won't be around in 2050, therefore, is it relevant to me? And uh, the response, of course, is that uh, most people have children and grandchildren, and, and there it will be relevant. And the young people I've been talking to are very interested in 2050 uh, from a variety of perspectives, because they really want to know what's going to happen to population, what will happen to the climate, and also what's going to happen to technology and AI. Those are the sort of key thing, themes that uh, they are picking up and they're interested in. Andreas, the future doesn't just happen. It's very much moulded by the present. Yeah. Uh, how do you think that will be explored? I mean, are, are you hoping that the sort of message of positivity about the world of tomorrow uh, will be delivered in that we can make a difference, we can make a change Yes. in what happens in the future. Well, I, I, th and I think that's critical. Uh, the, the, you know, the future doesn't just happen to us, it is created by us. And uh, that's why people have a significant impact on how 2050 will turn out. And not just uh, the, the politicians, the economists, but everyday citizens will have a big role to play in terms of what 2050 will be like. And I think engaging with the present is critical because the present is the given but how the present evolves uh, evolves into the future that's really up to us well the the series of lectures starts as you said on june the 16th with how to think about the future uh, what will be explored in that initial uh, lecture well this is really interesting because this is uh, a award-winning journalist hamish mcrae who actually wrote a book in 1994, The World in 2020. And that's where he got his acclaim, because he predicted things like Brexit, pandemics, and things like that in that book. And in 2023, he's now written another book, The World in 2050. So he obviously had some things right and other things not quite so right. And uh, that would be very interesting to explore uh, his thoughts uh, initially. And then we'll go on and, uh, and discuss uh, each of those facets individually. Uh, I, I'm quite hopeful that the world in 2050 won't be utopian and it, will, and it won't be dystopian. I think it will be a continuation of where we are now, but taking into consideration some of the major forces that will play a role over the next 20, 30 years. Right. How do people come to your lectures? Well, I mean, you know, you can go onto blsi.org and go and look at the events that are coming up. Uh, you can either come in person to uh, Queen Square here in Bath in person uh, to meet up with the various speakers, 
or you can buy tickets uh, online and watch it via live stream from the comfort of your own home.